Happy Native American Heritage Month, everyone. Prince of the Bear here. We're back at Epcot for Walt Disney World period because you know what? As two minorities, we don't like it when our other fellow minority, brothers, sisters, days, and thems, don't get representation. It is National Native American Heritage Month, or and Disney Indian, announced nothing. Or an Indian American Heritage Month, and Disney announced nothing. So we're going to do our best to help represent and bring light to some Native American things here at Disney World today. If you guys know of anything that we miss or miss or don't know, let us know in the comments. Until then, let's go celebrate our brothers and sisters. And be sure to enjoy peace, love, unity, and respect of all your fellow people around you. You heard the girl. You may wonder why we start here in America, because Native American history is American history, the backbone. Nice. Of, Na of American history is Native American history. A lot of the things that the settlers learned when they first came to America, they learned from Native Americans, from how to build homes, how to cook meat, how to survive, what to hunt, what they could eat, what they couldn't eat, which, you know, as your number one choice of food infotainment, is the basis of everything that we do. There's 60% of the crops in the world originated, cultivated by Native Americans. So it's funny that we can come here to the American Pavilion and see things that are donated from the uh, Indian Native American Heritage Museum in New York. We're one of those pe people we like to travel. When we travel, oddly enough, on almost every place we go, we end up in a museum. Yeah, we went to that one. It's inside the original census building, which is really cool, yeah. by the Stock Exchange. One of the coolest museums I've ever been to. Are you in New York City, give it a shot. It's not very expensive to go. It's free. It's not very crowded. It was a good time. So in our efforts to support uh, National Native American Heritage Month, uh, we got corn. Yes, I know it's corn, it's a little bit basic, but without Native Americans teaching the settlers how to make and grow and prepare corn, you wouldn't have a lot of what you do today. Most of the things you eat, store-bought, processed, have corn syrup in it. Most of the things that you eat, tortillas, everything, are all based on techniques they learn from people here. So. Cheers to our Native American uh, brothers, sisters, days, and names. Uh, these things are messy. I wish they made a vegan version, but they pre-make everything at that stand, so you get what you get. It smells amazing, but it looks like a buttery mess. Oh my god. I can see why people wait for this. It's got like this Indian, like Indian as in the country of India based like salt and seasoning mix on top with the butter it's it's amazing like mm. I'm supposed to be reviewing this for you guys I mean, we've wanted to get this for a long time but all I want to do is eat more of it it's a five out of five claws I wish we made a vegan version if the apprentice could eat this is like vegan butter and maybe even oil this would be an every time he comes in the park thing with floss corn is something to eat but in every time in the park thing. And it's cheap, it's like five, five twenty-nine. Cost effective. Celebrate. Mm -hmm. So for the southeastern tribes in the United States from Native American Heritage Month, I got shrimp and grits. Now, the whole corn was one of the major things that the settlers learned from Native Americans, but the process of grinding the corn into grits for food was something that they learned specifically from the north or southeastern tribes. 
So, Southern cooking styles, a lot of those, you have Native American strength for those. A good portion of it. Remember that. I'm going to dive in here. Some nice creamy. We got some radishes in here. Some very, like, well seasoned sea roach. Mm. The roots are okay, but they very much live off the back of the shrimp. They're not as well seasoned on their own. But they're still very good. There's so much spice on the shrimp. I recommend mixing it all in before you take your first bite. And sort of even them out because the shrimp seasoning is powerful. Like for those of you that aren't used to spices, you know, like Christopher Columbus. Um it can be much for you. I like it, even though I've had better shrimp and grits on property. I give it three and a half out of five. Representing the plains, we're doing an impossible bunny chow, which is a stew to represent the plains. I'm just going to go ahead and fork the inside of this since it's like, it's like a mini bread bowl with stew in it. Mmm. So tasty. It's got impossible meat, it's got potatoes, veggies, <coughs> all the things that you would love and appreciate. And on the plains, I would give it a 5 out of 5. This is one of my favorite things to get at Tiffin's or Nomad Lounge. So you have these mini like bread bowl with a stew in it because tribes in the plains had different techniques for like storing, preserving meat, but then also making stew of the veggies and stuff they found. And so stuff they could make quickly. So let's dive in. Also bunny chow. It's still like one of the most unique things you can get here in Animal Kingdom. I almost hate that it's like, I don't want to say paywall behind Tiffin's, but like it should be more readily available. It's like the options, the best options for food for Animal Kingdom are almost hidden in some regards for plant based people, but it's still really good. Four out of five plus. Here we have this massive bison burger, burger with the Marion berry jam and the garlic aioli. Now, uh, probably not actual bison because I don't think they've ever served bison on Disney property as long as we've been coming here. But bison inspired and the Marion berries are indicative of like the area of the, uh, the Great Plains, the plateau that this uh, food comes from. So Native American representation in the bites. And Disney, if we can do it, with uh, some copious amounts of searches and research over the course of a couple of days, and you have a whole company. Just give us a Native American heritage mark. Cowards. I really 
really gotta start managing their own bikes here. You get in this thing where you want to get the biggest bite and all the things, but sometimes I feel like I'm trying to choke myself and not in the fun way. Very juicy patty. I love the jam that's on this, the Marion Berry jam. It's excellent. Honestly, if you get it, I'd recommend getting extra on the side just to put more on there because it's really one of the brightest spots of the burger. I feel like you don't get quite enough of it. Otherwise, still one of my favorite burgers on property. Four to five plus. Even this fireplace here is representative of the Grand Canyon and lots of roots in Native American tribes in the southeast of the U.S. There's several tribes that comprise of the Grand Canyon and there's several colors to represent the layers of the Grand Canyon. One of the things you would never know looking at it is we had no idea, but if you look at it, now you will never be able to unsee that mm -hmm. color differentiation. Rough Riders sour because the roughest riders we already know the answer to that question. It's basically a whiskey sour but with Rough Rider whiskey. It's like a very tart lemonade. Think of like a um, Texas lemonade and you're pretty close but this is the Pacific uh, Northwest the Southeast. This is their version of that. I would give it three and a half out of five plus. In some small semblance of representing the Southwest, we have these mac and cheese bites that we had recently. Now, overcoming the gold rush and the Spanish colonization and all the other things that happen here in the Southwest, we have crunchy fried things that we can attribute to that and thank the Native Americans for that. So I'm gonna take a huge, huge bite. Cheers. It's so good. It has like this barbecue taste to it. It almost takes me back to like those um, barbecued eggplants we used to get at Narcoozies, but better because there's mac and cheese in it. So it's like, imagine like the, the barbecue piece of eggplants, but instead of eggplant in the middle, it's just mac and cheese. That's basically what this is. It is so good. And something super amazing. I will give it a 5 out of 5. It's a Princess City's item. Everybody needs to come here and try it. This is our second time trying it. It's still good. We've heard about inconsistencies as far as the creaminess of the mac and cheese, but I think dry or not, it's still tasty. Yes. Mac and cheese bite. Now they did fry a lot of things in the uh, southwestern native tribes like with oils back in those days so those cooking things didn't start when the Europeans got here they were already making cooking dishes like that before then and this is a tribute there's just a slight difference from the first time we came here the sauce is a bit different I like that the mac and cheese bites are a little bit more crunchy and then you have the the cheesy inside now it's not like a only like Velveeta cheese but it's still cheese it's not like it's dry it's definitely not dry it's just not like cheese fountain. It's not fondue inside of a breaded bite, but it's still extremely good. Five out of five claws. If you are a vegan, plant-based, vegetarian even, you need to come try these. It's tasty. It's very easy to do two things when you're in the lobby of Fort Wilderness. You can walk through, or there's so many things you're just overloaded and you still just walk through but like there are two pillars the totems that you have in the middle of this hotel in the lobby one here and the other back here were actually crafted by native american artisans and they represent the four directions which is why they have like bears and, and otters four seasons, and four two. seasons yes both of them so in addition to that they have artifacts all around the lobby like little glass cases from different tribes and whatnot this hotel is steeped in american history native american history
representing Hawaii with this Florida drink. Which I mean, you know, it's stolen land anyway, so cheers. It still tastes just as artificial as it did last time. It's just not my jam. Not into it. Two out of five pineapples. I mean, if Disney can't choose items to attach to Native American Heritage Month, we can do it for you. Hawaii, of course, home of some of the natives that make up our history here in this country of America. Pineapples. Who doesn't like pineapples? What size is the princess? Oof. This is a hard wine to drink. I love pineapple, but this is like more pineapple syrup than pineapple wine. That's what I get from it. And that's why it's sort of off. If it was a bit more less intense in like the syrupy texture and nature of it, it'd be a lot better. Two out of five plus. Here we have our Alani Sunrise. Not vegan, but a bunch of tropical juices in a cup with alcohol, which is 100% our bag. We don't have the sunrise as beautiful here in Florida. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. That is a little bit more manageable pineapple. It's dull pineapple juice that's in here, which all itself can be a little artificial in some regards, uh, but it's a lot more drinkable as a cocktail. If only you could drink every sunrise, or we'll be a happier place. Three and a half to five blocks. Here we have the Spam Masubi, or Spam Sushi, as they're now calling it, on the menu in the Hawaii booth. I was not looking forward to getting this again. Uh, I love Spam Masubi. Unfortunately, when we had it this year, it was got awful. The rice was overcooked. It did not taste great. And I actually ended up throwing it away. Uh, so this is supposed to be some sort of redemption. I do not have a lot of faith. I'm not going to lie. I'm not gonna lie, it has improved, but it's like a quarter step improvement. The rice is still got awful. Uh, dry and hard and just not, not good. Like it breaks my heart. So I wanna like this. There's absolutely zero chance I'm gonna finish this. One and a half out of five plus. I spit it out, so I guess it makes it a zero. Maybe it didn't improve that much. Second time. Second time. you can find consistently throughout every tribe that we researched. So in honor of the berry being utilized throughout the culture, I got a huckleberry punch. Not everyone uses huckleberry, but this is the berry that we have here at the Geyser Grill. Nice berry, like almost like a lemonade style drink. It's very sweet, it's like a dessert beverage it almost tastes like a pie i would say like reminds me of storybook dining gooseberry pie but not because obviously it's not gooseberry it's huckleberry four to five bucks i'd probably drink like three of these and enjoy it huckleberry punch i know that wants to be a reference to the wilderness but the fact that the berries everything else everything that we have in this country is thankful thanks to our Native American brothers and sisters, so it's always going to be cheers to them, because what's good for one of us is good for all of us. Mm. It was like fruit punch and alcohol, which are two of my favorite things on the planet. Fruit and alcohol. Mm. Four out of five plus.
here we are representing the Northwest Coast and Arctic at Territory Lounge. I got mac and cheese. Mac and cheese doesn't really have anything to do with the Native Americans, but they did have like cured and dried meats and whatnot. And underneath this huge pile of crispies, there's these little Beyond sausages, which don't really count as cured dried meat, but in the vegan world, this is our cured dried meat. Double fried meat. Nice and crispy. The mac and cheese here tastes just like the one in Geyser Girl. I love the crispies. I'm excited to eat this for lunch tomorrow at work because this is a huge portion. Oh, this is, this is a 5 out of 5. This is a princess lace item. This is a place to come for a mac and cheese haul, but also has nothing to do with Native Americans. I want to appreciate all of the things. Thank you for taking the time to appreciate with us. This massive mound of creamy goodness. I just like being here in Territory Lounge. And Territory Lounge really does have like a lot of like artifacts and history in it and all of that stuff. So things you should be remembering this month. In addition to celebrating Native American voices, if you know a Native American creator, a Native American friend, ask them a question this month. Amplify their voice, hear their stories, because they have, we have a lot to learn from people that came before us. Still, to me, if you told me this is plant-based cheese, I wouldn't believe you. It's too good. Six and a pot's too good. The spice is just on point. You give me these peppers. You go for that in your soul. The peppers I have in here, it's like a six and a ten heat, heat scale. I am spice high right now. Go to drug tits. Uh, still, the best mac and cheese in property. Five out of five claws. Yes, better than hoopty. Better, that's right, better than hoopty. I stand by that. I dial that in. I always need magic pills for flatbread. Put the cheese on it. But, in this dish, minus the numerous onions, um, we're celebrating how the Native American cultures in the Pacific Northwest survived off a lot of fish being so near the ocean and the Arctic. They cooked a lot of salmon. So, like, I used to live in Alaska on the Aleutian chain, which is home to the Aleut Indian, or Aleut Native Americans. And they, salmon is like a regular thing. That's like an everyday thing there. It's so easy to find. You get sick of salmon. But this is the thing. In my old Alaskan home. You have to be ready on this flatbread. Because it's like, the, the flatbread is like a flatbread dough, but the salmon is raw. It's not cooked salmon. It's raw salmon on top of cheese, onions, Okay, we're some seasoning, some green onions. So you have to like salmon. You really like salmon in this dish. But if you're a fish person, <laughs> again, like some other things. If you're not on a date, this is good food. Four out of five plus. So you get this little salmon two ways. You get this roll of salmon here, seasoned in a very similar way to what you get on the actual flatbread. I'm just going to fold it over. Take a little bit of seasoning on there. Beautiful. I'm just trying to be able to do this with like plant based carrots and like the same sort of seasoning. It's almost like a pastrami seasoned fish. That's like the flavor profile that you get. So it's strong, there's some layers to it. A little peppery. Still good. Four out of five claws. Giving the whole thing a solid four. Because I love salmon. As a bear would. Totems. Totems. Guardians is referred to in like different Native American cultures. Standing at the gates. Very important in pretty much all Native American culture. I actually saw these a lot when I was in Alaska. There's still a lot of these like standing and you see them. We like when you move in the military, sometimes they give you like classes and things you need to know. One of these things. Admire. Don't mess with them.
So that has been our makeshift celebration of the National Native American Heritage Month. Indian American Heritage Month, whichever. Whichever you prefer. If you guys like stuff like this, let us know. This is kind of fun. It's a bit different, a little bit more research, a little bit more work, but we don't mind. Bring everything up. Sometimes we can throw food into basically anything if we try hard enough. And please feel free to come for us with any inaccuracies. Yes. We didn't, if anything that we did do inaccurate, it was not intentional purely accidental and we really tried our best to be as accurate to each area as possible yes. considering there's so many different tribes and so many different things it's, it's so heartbreaking to even learn a, a small portion we are open to learn is basically what we're saying now as your number one choice in foodie infotainment if there's anything else you'd like to see us do of course the comments there's going to be a place to let us know hit that notification bell if you want to see other videos like this and we have new videos five days a week monday tuesday wednesday thursday saturday we will see you soon. Be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if you don't comment, Bear's gonna yeet himself into Brother Bear and Totem. I, I, I don't really like Brother Bear, but you heard the girl. Backside of Wilderness Lodge. You can only see this from the water crack usually. It's the shape of a bear. This is why we call it the Bear Hotel. There's the eyes and the nose. It's a bear hotel. Bear has to stay here one day. It's his hotel. I see what you did there. Probably not. Hello, my name is Juanita Grown Thunder Fogarty. I am a Cinnaboy Sioux from the Fort Peck Reservation, Montana. We consider ourselves a horse culture because horses enabled our ancestors to travel the Great Plains. We honor our horses in the same way we honor our leaders, by making finely beaded headdresses for them. Bead and quill work have been in my family for generations. It is a living spiritual art. We create to honor our ancestors and the natural world. Each cradleboard, doll, item of clothing, or headdress conveys our identity and homeland. Stories of the star people, the mountains, lakes, and skies are retold in the borders of buffalo robes, teepee covers, and winter town hives. As we be, we pray, sing, and tell stories so that each work is filled with gratitude, honor, and sometimes loss. My creations are inspired by dreams, by stories told at family gatherings, or stories shared as we be together around the table. Our lifestyle has prevailed over the centuries, and now it is my duty and my blessing to carry on this beautiful legacy.